So if you're interested in color grading, this is the channel for you. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can create these beautiful, desaturated, kind of muted green tones that a lot of wedding photographers have been doing at the moment in Lightroom Classic. Now, I love this effect because what it doesn't do is affect the skin tones, which is really important. You can create these beautiful, desaturated greens, but if it ruins the skin tones, it's rubbish, but this particular effect doesn't do that, which is really nice. So today I'm gonna to be talking through step-by-step -step on how you can create these beautiful, desaturated, kind of muted green tones in your photos using Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the very first thing you want to do is go ahead and choose a photo. Now, there's only one caveat to this effect. There needs to be green in the photo. Because obviously if we're gonna desaturate and mute the greens, there needs to be greens to begin with. But apart from that, any type of photo will do. Landscape, portrait, weddings, events. In my particular case, I've got a beautiful wedding photo which I recently took at a golf course, which obviously got a lot of green in it. They're on a green mound with a green background with trees. So this particular effect works really well when you're wanting to, you know, there's gotta be green in the photo. So make sure that is the case with your image. Right, so what we're gonna do firstly is I'm gonna go over to the develop panel, make sure that is open. And then we're gonna firstly drop down to the basics panel. Good place to start. Now, I shot this at uh, kind of middle of the day, maybe 4 p.m. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my uh, Kelvin to 5600, which is a kind of in the middle, because I'm working on a raw photo, we've got Kelvin, but what I'll do is add a little bit more warmth because of its shot at daylight. And I'm going to keep the tint because I shot on manual white balance. So what I'm gonna do firstly is I'm gonna go ahead and just brighten the overall photo. So I'm gonna bring that up. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the contrast up as well. Now, because obviously there is a white dress, what I'm gonna do is reduce the highlights, bring a little bit more information back in that dress area. You can see it's a lovely dress, it's got all these kind of lovely details on it, and we don't want to lose that in the overall outcome. So I'm gonna reduce those highlights, and what I'm gonna do is bring up those shadows slightly, but we don't wanna make it look like HDR, so I'm not gonna bring up the shadows too much. Then what I'm gonna do is go to texture, add in 10% texture. Now with all type of portrait photos, one thing I like doing, and that is all to do with clarity. I want to reduce the clarity instead of increasing the clarity, because what that will do is it will smooth out some of the skin tones and overall features of the photo. Not by too much, but by enough to make the photo look a little bit softer and instead of increasing it. But if you're working on a landscape photo, I recommend increasing the clarity, because sometimes it can make sh the photos look even sharper. So what I'm gonna do is go to that clarity there, and I'm gonna reduce that down by around about, let's say, minus 20% there. But again, not by too much, or minus 20, there we go. Now, I like adding in a little bit of dehaze, but not by much, so I'm gonna add in literally just five there. Now, we're going for a desaturated look, and we've got vibrance and saturation. Now, if you wanna know more about vibrance and saturation, both in Photoshop and Lightroom, I've made a separate video on this. But basically, what we're gonna do is increase vibrance and decrease saturation. So I'm gonna increase vibrance by 20%, and then indirectly go to a saturation and remove that by 20%, do it negatively. Now saturation and vibrance affect different parts of the photo. So if you really wanna know more, go ahead to the link in the description. So okay, so once we've done that, let's go ahead back up from basics and drop down to tone curve. Now we're only gonna do a very small tweak and that's to create a bit more of a matte effect in the black tones. So we're gonna do raise up the highlights ever so slightly reduce those shadows ever so slightly. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the very black or the very far left-hand side. I'm gonna raise that up. Now I like doing this to all desaturated tones. It had this nice matte look. It looks kind of almost satiny and it, it works really well, I think, especially if you're desaturating the colors, you don't have this pure black and because sometimes it can make it look very harsh and contrasty. So removing just a slight kind of pinch of black can sometimes really aid in this particular color grading effect. So that's all we're gonna do to the cone curve. As you can see, nice and simple, very subtle S curve falling into this matte finish. Then what we've got is HSL. Now this is gonna be where we're making the largest change. So let's start off with hue first. Hue, 
type of color, saturation, intensity of that color, luminance, brightness of that color. That's how it's broken down. So let's start off with hue first. So we're just go to the red, so let's leave that alone. Let's drop down to the oranges and we're gonna put in minus 10% there. Then we've got the yellows here. We're gonna increase that by 30%. Then we've got the greens, we're going to go for 40%. Then we're gonna skip aquas, and we're gonna drop down to blues, and we're gonna drop those down by minus 20. And that's all the changes we're going to be making in the hue section. So now let's go ahead to saturation. This is where we're gonna make most the largest impact, I think, to the overall photo, because obviously desaturating some colors, you know, saturation controls that. So let's go ahead to saturation. Now, like I was saying, we're gonna leave reds alone. We're gonna go to oranges and we're gonna go ahead and boost that by 25. But we're gonna go to the yellows, which is probably where the greens are found both in the yellows and greens. I know it sounds a bit weird, but a lot of kind of kind of trees and whatnot, you'll find there is a lot of yellow in those greens. So we do wanna reduce those. So let's go that and let's drop that down by minus 35. Then let's go to the greens and drop that by the largest amount today, which is minus 70. Then let's go to aquas and I'm going to reduce that by minus 50. Let's go to blues, let's drop that down by minus 50. And then lastly, we've got purples and magentas, which we're gonna drop by minus 25 and magentas we're going to drop by minus 25. Lovely. Then let's go ahead and the last one we're gonna do is luminance and luminance is the brightness. And we're only gonna affect basically two or three sliders in this particular case, basically the actual brightness of the background. So we go to yellows. So we're gonna go to the yellows here and we're gonna reduce that by 20 or increase that by 20, sorry. And then greens, let's go ahead and increase that by 40. Now, if you desaturate while brightening the photo, it, what it basically does is it even removes even more saturation. There's a balance basically between hue, saturation, and luminance. And playing around with those sliders independently can affect colors. So if you're desaturating colors as well as increasing the brightness of that particular color, you will notice it desaturates even more and makes it almost whiter. So, it all depends on kind of what effect, but I really like this kind of almost high key look when we're creating this desaturated tone. If you make it look too dark, it can sometimes make it look muddy and I don't really wanna go for this brownie muddy look. So I'm gonna make it more of a high key look and brighten the overall photo. Okay, so let's finish off with HSL and let's drop down to color grading. Now we're only gonna be affecting basically the brights and the darks. So we could basically create in this more split tone effect like what old Photoshop used to be. So what we're gonna do is go to shadows. We're gonna go ahead and add in green. So I'm gonna go ahead and whip it around to green. I'm gonna add in 5% saturation to the shadows. Then highlights, because predominantly, if we go ahead and zoom in, you see their faces are looking a little bit washed out. Let's add in a kick of orange to that. So let's go to orange here, bring that around, and let's add in, let's say around 20% orange. And that will help just bring out some of that kind of vibrance that's originally lost in the skin tones. We don't wanna make them look like ghosts, Let's go ahead and add in a little bit more orange there. And you can add in more or less if we add in too much. What does that look like? Yeah, that's way too much. Let's, uh, let's go to 25%. That is a good middle ground. And let's go ahead and zoom out. As you can see, if I just affect this one effect, so if I do the before and after, you can see we just add a little bit more warmth to the photo that I think was originally lost. Let's go ahead back to color grading. Now, there's only two more things that I want to affect, and that's calibration of the lens, because I always do that with every single photo, but also I want to add in a small amount of vignetting. So let's drop down to lens corrections, making sure it's turned on in this particular case, so that's good. Remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. You won't have to do this if you're working on a JPEG photo, but I am working on a raw photo in this particular case, so me to make sure these are both turned on. As you can see, Canon 85mm and I shot on 85mm 1.4. And then lastly, let's go down to effects. Let's go down to post cropping vignette. And let's go ahead and add in a nice amount of vignette. Because the uh, subject is in the center of the frame, a vignette can help emphasize them in the center. It's all to do with the structure of your composition. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to minus 20 there. Not gonna change anything else. And there we go, guys. So what I can do is quickly show you the before. As you can see, it does look quite muddy and not very good. And then after, 
and I really like this desaturated tone. You can go even more extreme if you want to. I've gone for more of a subtle look for work with most photos, but what you really can do is really remove those greens and really make them desaturated, and it will make those skin colors really pop. So there we go, guys. Here is the before, and here is the after. And write it down in the comments below if this particular effect worked for you.